what, what the mate is talking about. Yeah. What's up, family? I'm going to make this quick. I'm not going to go into details. If you want to get all of that stuff, you can look it up yourself. But I did want to touch on this subject between siblings going at it. Easy es daughter, Remarkable, who is a rapper, took to social media to talk about her displeasure with people using her daddy's music and not giving props. But she also added that these same people who pushed the OK button to allow these dope rappers to use her father's music will not give them the same courtesy as his children. She's a rapper. She says she can't even get a clearance to use her own daddy's music. And neither can her other siblings. Well, one of her siblings, Eby, clapped back at her saying, look, I don't know this girl, whoever she is, she don't speak for my whole family. Every time something comes up involving my daddy, she got something to say. She don't speak for my family. She doesn't speak for me. My dad didn't even know her. That's what she says, that's her side. Now, all of this drama came about because Megan the Stallion used the song Boys in the Hood. She sampled Boys in the Hood, which she's calling Girls in the Hood. Personally, I can't wait to hear it. Boys in the Hood has always been one of my favorite songs written by Ice Cube. I wonder what Cube got to say about that. In any event, it boils down to who owns the music. And it's sad that the music wasn't passed down to his kids. I don't know how that would, would have been debbied up because he has a lot of kids. But one thing that could have happened is that somebody could have been an administrator and the kids could have owned the rights to the music equally. I know that with my music, everything I have goes to my two kids. It's real simple. You know, um, he's, he got kids by several different women. So perhaps that's what complicates things uh, for his uh, legacy and his estate. But it really breaks my heart to see these youngsters arguing among one, one another, to see these kids going back and forth, you know, going in on each other. I couldn't have predicted something like this, like, but who thinks this far in advance? I didn't think this far in advance as far as like what other, I guess, artists, kids would be doing, uh, you know, with their legacy and how they would be viewing and how they would be treated when it came to the use of their father's work. This is why I made sure that I owned all of my work. I made certain that I that my kids own my work. Anything where well, I own it, and in the event of my demise, my kids own it. Keep it real simple. Now my kids, <laughs> my son and daughter, they bump heads from time to time, but they love each other, genuinely love each other. These two kids seem to actually genuinely hate each other. I mean, it's a lot of venom in their remarks. And it's sad. It always seemed to be like extra sad when siblings going at it, especially girls. When I see sisters going at it, granted that they don't have the same mother, but they do have the same bloodline. They got the same father. And you would think for the legacy of their father, that they figure it out how to get along. You know, just out of respect for their father to have a certain amount of decorum when dealing with one another for the sake of their father's legacy, because they can't just go out, well, I guess they could, I was about to say, they can't just go out and behave any type of way 
and there not be any consequences. But they could, but there will be consequences uh, in regards to putting blemishes on Easy es legacy, because that's who everybody's talking about. Let's face it, if Easy e was not their father, we wouldn't be having this conversation. I wouldn't be talking about this right now. But it is Easy e Easy e is the catalyst for this subject, for this discussion. And it was his legacy, it's his legacy that they're beefing over. Yeah, I don't get it. And I think it's hard for the kids to get it though when, when it comes to the use of that music. Whoever owns that music, they're looking at it strictly as business. And they'll let the kids use the music for a fee. Keep in mind, family, uh, the people who own this music, I'm assuming, is not family. So they're not going to do any favors. They'll do something if you put up the right amount of money. But I, one of the girls, uh, Remarkable, asked what could be done so that they don't have to go through this cease and desist when they use their father's music. They don't get papers. What can be done so that they could actually use their father's music and they could benefit off the music? If I were them, if I don't have a uh, legal, if I don't have a strong legal uh, argument, I'd, I'd take it to the public. I'd try the whole case in the court of public opinion. And I would put a tremendous amount of pressure on them, especially right now. They could do that right now. If they go after anybody for their daddy's music, They'll get some assistance, trust me. So if anybody know them, tag them or whatever and let them know. Call out the name of the company who owns the publishing. Call out the owners. Call out everyone who's involved with the ownership. Even the people who was involved in the transaction. Let it be known Put them on blast. That's what I would do. No more talk. What the ladies talking about?